Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. If you're watching this video, either you subscribed or you have interest in rhabdomyolysis. This is where your muscles get weak and they break down. Now, this is a fairly rare problem in the medical field, but it can occur in the outdoors. In fact, what got me motivated to do this is another uh, YouTuber who I follow, who's actually my neighbor up in the neighboring state of Wisconsin, probably about two and a half hours away, is Dan Becker. And I'm going to put a link to his video below. And I'm here to tell you, this guy does tons of videos on camping and hiking, and he got involved in going from one rim of the Grand Canyon to the other rim and got in trouble. <clears throat> and they got him out of there, but he had a very bad case of rhabdo. So rhabdomyolysis, it can happen when you exercise to a great extent and you're not prepared. And how, let me just explain how else this occurs. It occurs when you could have a crush injury. In all the years I've been doing medicine, I've had one patient with rhabdo. And she, ironically, was climbing at Devil's Lake in Wisconsin, and she fell about 25 to 30 feet, had crush injuries on her legs, her torso, and had a lot of muscle damage. You see this with uh, motor vehicle accidents. You can see this with excessive alcohol intake. Um, you can see this with snake bites. Snake bites, well, they will bite you. The muscle breaks down because of the hemotoxic venom. It has to be a hemotoxic venom, like your pit vipers. And then that blood pulls in between the muscles and puts tons of pressure, and you have muscle breakdown. And we're going to get into some of them. I keep this very base because the vast majority I know are not medical, but it's very important for you to be aware of so this does not occur to you because potentially it could be life-threatening. So motor vehicle accidents, crushed injuries, snake bites, heat stroke, thyroid problems, excessive alcohol intake, and certain drugs. Uh, for example, statins, one of the most widely prescribed. The incidence of this happening across the United States is about 23,000 per year. So it's not that common. But if you combine the fact that people are out there hiking more, camping more, and they're pushing themselves to the limit, then you were going to see an increase. This is, a, this is a problem where your head and your ego pushes your body, and your body is talking to you, telling you to stop, rest, slow down, and you push ahead. This is a real problem with hubris connected to rhabdo when it's concerned of, with working out and exercising too much. You'll see a lot of people with rhabdo that are exercising, pull-ups, 100 sit-ups, uh, high school kids where coaches are pushing them on the football field. So these are some of the situations where this can occur. So most of these cases resolve. Many have some lingering problems down the road. So what exactly is this and what happens? In your muscles, you have a protein called myoglobin. Myoglobin, as opposed to hemoglobin, holds on to oxygen. Hemoglobin, Im imagine it's a little lifeboat that travels through and it goes through your lungs and it picks up oxygen and it carries it and transport it. Myoglobin, that protein, holds on to oxygen. All in the muscles. When your muscle breaks down, for whatever reason that we talked about before, it releases that myoglobin. And the problem is, is your kidneys cannot filter that. So what happens, imagine a gas filter in your lawnmower or your car getting clogged up. And then when you start peeing, you're going to see your urine be a reddish brown. We call it iced tea urine. Uh, you're going to have muscle weakness. They're going to hurt. If you've worked out your arms, you can't even lift them. They're so painful. So I need to... I need to qualify something though. So just because you have iced tea colored urine doesn't mean you have rhabdo. There are tons of other things that can cause that. Um, hepatitis can cause that also. So you have to be aware. Don't just take one of the things I bring up and start spinning it and go to Google and go, oh my gosh, I have rhabdo. No, it's a concoction of different symptoms that will happen. And that's important to note. 
For my medical personnel out there, you're going to want to see your urine. We have an enzyme called creatine kinase, and we're going to, we want to see if that's elevated and how high. Um, also, this uh, myoglobin is found in skeletal muscles in, in vertebrates, mammals, and it's found in heart tissue. So if you have a heart attack, that myoglobin can be raised also. So what are you looking for? You're out there, you're hiking the Grand Tetons, you're hiking the Smoky Mountains, and your muscles are starting to get fatigued, and your urine's getting a little dark. What are you going to do? And you feel like you can't walk. You need to be transported back if possible. That would be great. No more walking. Stop. Slow down. And the treatment is basically supportive IV fluids. Flush that stuff out of the kidneys. The biggest thing to take away from this video is going to be prevention. That's the biggest thing with rhabdo and camping, hiking, the outdoors. If you're in your 60s like me and you haven't worked out a bunch and you just go out there and want to start hiking, bad move. If you're 27 and you're going to get fit really quick and start cramming the weights and you do a ton in one day and you're sore and you do it again two days later and two days later, bad move. So it's good judgment, it's preparation, it's a slow process, and then go enjoy yourself. Don't go out there and just go gung-ho Marine Corps, okay? That is the kind of situation that could fall you into the 23,000 per year. And it is life-threatening, and it can have residual side effects. So rhabdomyolysis, or rhabdomyolysis, as some people call it, that's what happened to Dan Becker. And Dan's still walking and talking and making some great videos. So please check out his site. He's got gobs of subscribers. He's, he seems like a great guy. Never met him. All right, that's Rabdo. Stay safe. Keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. I will see you next time.